Welcome back to the Cariola Grand Prix. We have had about 32 laps completed of the 72 lap race distance. We're closing in on halfway. David Kerkorian has led every lap since the drop of the green flag. Jacob Card is second. Scott Bates, Ryan Matthews, Alessandro Rossini appear to be the prime contenders to win this race so far. But Packer Carroll, Arto Kakinen, Mika Rantanen cannot be counted out if there's some more attrition. Leonid Roderick and Yulia Sova could also challenge. Surprisingly, Roderick has been in an incident already. Ian Cooper having a steady run. Nermister and Teravainen fl um, flying under the radar. The Sylvan cars of Vir uh, Virtanen and Alenko have fallen backwards. Klaveno and Ashby have had time penalties. Here's Luciano Savarol, who's been making his way up from the back of the field. Archer Harris started last. He's having a great run there in 22nd. Loxon and De uh, Davina Henton and Ben Atkins all uh, continue to... Uh, have decent runs. Henton after a crash earlier in the race. Kivela in the third Sylvan car and Tenchi have uh, had some issues along with Frank Azure. And here is all the cars currently out of the race. Only six of them have retired so far. That is a somewhat of a surprise. This race has had very high attrition in the past. Sederberg and Dwyer in a huge accident. Uh, Andershund had mechanical failures and Woodard, Pochisato and Raymond all had a, um, had a separate incident on lap three. Here is David Krikorian in car number 04, the Hondas Walter Racing test driver in his cult, Morel Altair, leading the way. Uh, he is uh, currently closing in on the 186 car of Thomas DeBach in his tenere. Uh, DeBach, the uh, first Belgian to make a Master Cup Series start in quite some time, as DeBach um, lets Krikorian go by. In fact, the last start for a Belgian driver was here uh, you know, almost a decade ago. So Thomas DeBach is, um, he is doing his country proud, I'm, I will say that. So, and he's having a very respectable uh, debut in the series. He is a uh, Dash Cup regular. Here's Packer Carroll in the 18, the Ultor Unlimited car. Uh, he's uh, having a very solid run so far. This is a much better drive than um, than uh, what we've uh, been used to seeing out of Packer Carroll. It's like we've uh, the the man that Packer Carroll has been touted to be has been remained has re remained dormant for some time, and all of a sudden he has shown up this year. Yulina Sova has really been kind of picking up Lynx Racing, and they've had a terrible year so far. Uh, Davina Henton has been demoralized all season long. In fact, Henton's morale this week has been uh, pretty low. Ingrid Hadeland is uh, really Ingrid Hadeland's pretty inexperienced, so there's not much to expect out of Hadeland. Really, she's fulfilling all expectations. But Yulina Sova in this 10 car really uh, getting to it and is uh, still remaining to be a threat on race day. Jacob Card in car number six in his Lennard running second. He's right behind the uh, the midnight of Yumino Tenshi who moves out of his way, as a lap car is supposed to do. Uh, but Tenshi moved out of the way only when Card caught to the back of her. So Yumino Tenshi in the 25 car is still racing people. Um, uh, not not Jacob Card, obviously, but she is still determined on racing other cars out there. Uh, the midnight is not giving up as we're looking at Luciano Savarol in car number five, as he is... Um, He's one spot out of the points. Jason got Kuznetsov in the field. Oh, whoa! Locks it in contact with Salvarol. There's a Sylvan car off the road. Nowhere for Salvarol to go. And he's right into the, so into the side of the 118. And that's damaged the front end of the Lennard quite heavily. Now, we're going to have a look here as Chris Johans and Matty Alenko contact. Johans just shoves Alenko off. Alenko spears across the grass. Salvarol had just regained control of his car after that contact with Christopher Loxen and and then Alenko just was right there in front of him. Nowhere for Savarol really to go. And, uh, oh, that's that's a little surprising, but perhaps not. As we see Leonid Roderick in car number four having a run at Mikko Rantanen in the 770 car. Roderick is uh, putting a lot of pressure on the young Finn. I don't think Rantanen um, is uh, really used to having someone of Roderick's stature um, really hounding him as much as he is, but then again... Uh, Mikko Rantanen is, is not a bad race driver in his own right. He's very, very, uh, he's got a lot of talent in behind the wheel of that 770 car. He's holding off Leonid Roderick, three-time winner of this race. And uh, then again, if Roderick doesn't kind of hustle it up, he's gonna, he risks losing Arto Kakinen in front of Rantanen. And he also risks having that 777 car right behind him, that silver and pink car closing in on him. The Allison Becker right of Ian Cooper as Roderick tries to take Rantanen, Rantanen, Squeezes him down, but still gives him... Whoa! Rantanen being very aggressive with the defenses here. And I don't think... Um, I think Roderick is going to be a little bit annoyed with that. Um, but that's still fair racing. So here is Roderick's teammate, the number three Aperture Science Volpe of Alessandro Rossini, the Italian, and Ryan Matthews doing battle for fourth. 
Ryan Matthews, the Independence Trophy candidate, and uh, the uh, the short tracker. I uh, didn't really have a whole lot of experience when he jumped into the series full time. It's Adrian Devereaux has returned to the race in the car number seven. So Adrian Devereaux has been uh, in and out of the pits. It looks like in um, that seven car. He's a couple laps down, but uh, Adrian Devereaux. Oh, we got trouble. That's Jacob Card. That's car number six, the second place car. Jacob Card is smoking. There is a fire on board that car. Get out of it, son. Jacob Card, car number six, looking for the next corner worker station to pull over into. He just passed one. I'm not sure where why where he's going, but if I was him, I'd pull that car off, jump out of it, as he appears to continue on in blissful ignorance that his car is, is an inferno back there. And uh, Matty Alenko in the 118 car is slowing on track. That contact with Savarola has not done that car any good either, and he is now out of it as DeBach. Thomas DeBach got a help from one of the cats as it looked like Carlos Roqueta. And, um, oh, there's some damage in that car as well. So it looks like Thomas DeBach's very strong debut in this series appears to have come to an end. So we've had a lot of retirements in the span of a very short period of time. Uh, there is a local yellow up in turn six because of Jacob Card in car number six. That car is an inferno over there. Here's Adrian Devereaux, who has returned to the race. He's back in 34th position. Um, he's come back on track. He is several laps down. That car does not look like it's running at full song. And uh, I would imagine he'll be bringing that in. Yes, he looks like he's definitely slowing. He's bringing that car back in the pits. Something definitely wrong with car number seven. And I would imagine he would be retiring it at this rate. And here you see on the left there is the running order. DK still leading. Well, and there you see Arto Kakina being challenged by Ian Cooper. That's the battle for seventh. As uh, that triple seven car hanging on fairly well, as you can see from the from there, Roderick has displaced this battle as Ian Cooper for forcing his way through. But Arto Kakinen fighting back. 22 cars still in the lead lap. Ashby only barely, and that is with a time penalty as Ian Cooper clears Kakinen around the outside. That Allison Becker car really making some headway. Both the EFR car is actually running very well. Adrian Devers, you saw there, over three laps down. And I would imagine at this point, uh, Adrian Devereaux is going to just want to, um, I think he's uh, more or less done for the day. Anyways, Roderick in car number four is running in sixth position. He's having a pretty good race so far, despite a tire problem on lap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Roderick, that, that, there's something is wrong with the four car. That, that thing just snapped suddenly. Almost like there's a suspension failure, and I would not be surprised if that's the case at all. After a fantastic drive back to the field, Leonid Roderick is now out of it. After a fantastic drive, Chris Johans in the, in the 12 car now running. Oh, oh, he was running with Lewis Kingston. Oh, and that's a spectacular accident, and Chris Johans is on top of the tire walls. After the Dwyer S, he's on board with Lewis Kingston. He's letting Chris Johans go. Johans not quite there, backs out of it, loses the car a bit. There's Swamian, and, and that is a massive accident over there at the end of the Dwyer S. Uh, Yako Swamian and Chris Johans both out as we're looking at... Matty Lanko's not out of it, I guess. <laughs> that car is still going, and it appears to have fallen apart again. So, Matty Alanko, 118 car. I thought he was out already, but no, he came back out. Looks like he did a couple laps, and now Lanko done. Chris Johans and uh, Yako Swamin and uh, we can confirm that they are both climbed out of their cars, um, but uh, I don't think neither of them are terribly happy about that situation as DK still leads in the 04 car, the Renac sponsored entry. And uh, also it's some sponsorship from Aratel and the DK crew as he brings it in to serve, to, um, well, to pit that car, Ryan Matthews, who has moved up into second. Uh, is now pitting as well. Scott Bates uh, was um, only lost second because he pitted a lap early. So the 88 car, the EFR Journey A90, beginning to make some headway. As here is DK trying to lap the 46 car of Frank Azure, who is uh, still in the race. Nothing awful has happened to him yet, other than that uh, er collision earlier in the race. Here's Melanie Claveno in car number two. Melanie Claveno is uh, well down the order, but if she didn't have a time penalty, she would be third after the round of pit stop cycles out. She would be ahead of Rossini, ahead of Matthews. And here is Rossini in car number three, who currently runs third. Matthews is uh, right behind him. 
uh, in the running order, but uh, a long ways behind on the track. Uh, the Italian has never won a TM Master Cup Series race. He's looking to uh, change that today. Here is Ryan Matthews in the 06 car, who could be looking for the first win for, for an Independence Trophy car since Martinez at Daytona a couple of years ago. Packer Carroll in the 18 car runs in 6th. Julian Asova in the car number 10. The Lynx car runs in 7th. A pretty strong 7th, actually, from Julian Asova in uh, the Lynx L313B. Uh, is Ian Cooper now. We're looking at the 777 car who is back in 8th at the moment. And he's having a pretty good run there in that uh, Allison Becker car. There you see Nasova has pit the 10 car a bit late, so Cooper will move ahead of Yuli Nasova. Kekita now will um, uh, assume the position uh, right behind Ian Cooper, so he'll be moved up to 8th, I do believe, once everything gets sorted out. There's a couple of time penalties that we are trying to keep track of. One of them is Zelda Ashby, who, without a time penalty, would be solidly in the top 10 at the moment. Marcus Teravainen in car 236, and Mika Rantanen in car 770 are the two highest-running cars that aren't series regulars, or at least from teams that are only running this race, because DK is not a series regular, but that team is that he drives for. The uh, 236 car of Teravainen, that's a Fiam car. And the car that Teravainen, that, um, that Rantanen has, sorry, that's an Omeka. Uh, here is Talon in the 221 car. He's back in the Fintech car, back in, all the way back in 31st, a couple laps down. As you see, Clavino and Scott Bates now racing each other. Melanie Clavino, if, if she had no time penalties, this would be the battle for second place. Clavino moving on the inside of the 88 car. She's sticking her nose out, but she's on an alternate strategy. Melanie Clavino is on an alternate strategy. Just remember that. She had an incident earlier and uh, had to bring that car a couple incidents earlier and had to pit uh, had to pit afterwards and Scott Bates realizes no point racing Clavino and he just lets her go she's got low fuel oh Lewis Kingston Alexis Rainsford right in front of him now Alexis Rainsford's normally a very courteous back marker but you don't normally see her being lapped but Rainsford um, I do wonder if Rainsford's waiting on a certain 55 car oh Melanie Pitt Melanie Pitting Melanie pits the Aratel car as Scott Bates now goes by Lewis Kingston and Alexis Rainsford, who are, don't think that's a battle for position. I could be mistaken, but uh, that battle is of no significance. Here is uh, Ryan Matthews now. He's got, he is really trying to make the most of his strategy. He's coming around by Talonin. Oh, Talonin into the curve. Matthews into Talonin, and they're both off. Ryan Matthews in the 06 car was running in fourth. With his, the way his strategy was working, I think he probably could have been a surprise contender for a podium. Maybe even a win here. And it looks like he might have just thrown that away needlessly with a lapped car. You know, the race, as long as this is, we're looking at Talonin. And going into the Dwyer S, Talonin doesn't make a move on Kingston. He's, uh, he's got a loose race car, the 221. Pushes it wide, gets into the curb, loses the back end. But Ryan Matthews just kind of keeps his foot in it and just turns the 221. I don't really see why he needed to do that. And then it looks like he might have just almost tried to give him a shot afterwards. That seemed unnecessary uh, for Ryan Matthews and uh, a bit of an uncharacteristic mistake for him to make. But it looks like the pressure may have just gotten to him and uh, he just got way too aggressive. I, he must have thought that he needed to put in a lot of really fast laps all of a sudden, regardless of if anyone was in the way or not. And that's very unfortunate for Ryan Matthews. We're looking at David Krikorian, who, or not looking at David Krikorian, but on the left side you see David Krikorian leading the race. What you just saw was Arto Kekkonen passing Peter Short, who's a couple of laps down. As um, to, uh, Ryan Matthews still in the race, but he will drop down the running order because he's got some repairs to do. Adrian Devereaux, yes, you see he has pulled the 7 car off track. And uh, uh, Neil Stallone in the 221 out of the race. Fintech hasn't been doing very well lately, and I wouldn't entirely be surprised if um, this may be the last we see of them. And that would be a big disappointment, really, because they have been quite a bit of fun to watch here over the years. Packer Carroll, in the meantime, is uh, taking this with... He's got a uh, pretty good advantage here. He's got his teammate holding up the 25. Ah, yep, that's the power of teamwork. That blue and red 17 is Packer Carroll's teammate and, and um, just helped Packer get through lap traffic. Great teamwork by Manicor Engineering. They've been 
Packer Carroll and Lewis Kingston have, have um, really been working well together so far today. Kingston has just been really helping Packer get through lap cars, and uh, I think this is great fun, really, to watch how they make their how uh, Kingston helps Packer get through traffic, and uh, Carroll now pitting the 18 car. As uh, we only, uh, but that is uh, one lap later. Looks like we got David Krikorian coming into the pits. Let's one of the Sylvan cars. Looks like Kivela, and that's Carlos Raquetta in the 14 car. Uh, Raquetta, I'm a little surprised he doesn't have a penalty headed his way, but um, that could be happening post race. As whoa, Scott Bates in the 88 car made up a lot of ground in, the, in pit entry because he didn't have to get around Yuho Kivela in the pits. Here's the 88 leaving the pit lane. And now is DK. Where is Krikorian? He's left the pits. He's left the pit lane. But look at that! Just from David Krikorian having to lift off the throttle for Yuho Kavela entering his pit stall, Scott Bates is now right on his tail. Scott Bates in that 88 car must have absolutely hammered that hammered it coming into the pits, whereas DK has been taking it easy. Scott Bates, you think that um, you know some of the older drivers in this field in the field, you know, might no better than to take it easy entering pits or might be you know, a bit more careful clearly not the case here Scott Bates wants to win this 88 car I uh, would watch out for the custom carts that uh, burgundy and uh, silver car uh, as he's trying to get around Kavala but he's not quite close enough this is what Krikorian needs Scott Bates now nope not close enough to get around Kavala but Kivela, if he stays where he is, is going to find his way into a points finish. And Kivela, remember, Kivela's the guy who wants to get on the Master Cup circuit. He's been trying for several years, but has never really found any opportunities other than a, than a one-off showing here. Um, oh, whoa. At, now, at this point, I think if he wants to get on the circuit full-time, move out of the way. You show a little bit of respect here, but I think Kivela... Uh, is uh, trying to not crash his own car because that car does not look like it's handling all too well at the moment, but at the same time, uh, a little bit of mirror usage might be nice. Alessandro Rossini, in the meantime, is still in third. Uh, <laughs> there's Melanie Claveno in the car she had uh, problem and um, a car that uh, her former teammate had problems with, Frank Azure, uh, earlier in the race. Claveno going by Rossini, not really for position. It will be if, if Clavino's time penalties get appealed, but I don't think Rossini sees any point in fighting Clavino as aggressively as she's driving at the moment um, and just lets her go. There is Melanie. Uh, to say that she's been very animated on the radio this race would be a little bit of an understatement. She wasn't terribly happy with uh, getting whacked to the time penalty and then being investigated post-race for uh, a totally different incident. So, uh, Melanie... Uh, we've Melanie definitely uh, very upset driving that car and uh, definitely getting her angry is making her faster uh, not to compare her to the Hulk or anything but that certainly appears to be what's going on here is now she's squeezing Scott Bates in behind the lap car at Kivela Melanie's gonna have a run on him and it looks like it's gonna work but David Krikorian in the 04 pulling away as all of this is going on back here, this is exactly what DK needs to see. Melanie's trying to play penalty killer. I don't, and I don't think she wants to waste any more time. And she doesn't. Scott Bates now has to worry about Yuho Kivela in the 119. And he finally gets by him. But Kivela's pace was quite something else. We can hold up Scott Bates like that. DK now. Here's Melanie. There's his teammate right behind him. David Krikorian's got to play it smart here, especially because not only is that his teammate, but that's someone who is has, has ulterior motives. She's trying to kill a penalty. If Melanie's going to win this race, she has to do so by over 30 seconds. As uh, she's going around Krikorian, this is technically a pass for the lead. Not really, because Melanie has a time penalty, as I mentioned, probably ad nauseum. As Carlos Raquetta throws it off right in front of Clavino. And uh, that was that was sketchy. Uh, I don't think Raquetta knew what uh, could have seen Melanie coming. As now Clavino is chasing down Gaspar de Souza, who is having a terrible race, to say the least. I don't think de Souza is having a particularly good time today. And I don't think the uh, port young Portuguese driver would have imagined that um, this race would have uh, gone quite as badly, especially since he won from last at Brands Hatch earlier in the year. 
DK boxed in behind the 60 car. Technically, that's a pass for the lead, but anyways, DK in the 04 uh, still holds the lead of the race over Scott Bates as Melanie Clavino continues to pull away. And here is Ryan Matthews, the very sorry state of this car. Still running in eighth, but, uh, or seventh, sorry. Uh, but uh, depending on how penalties go, he could be sixth. A <laughs> little bit of a messy statement here with time penalties, especially when you got two cars that uh, have time penalties that are in the top ten, so might get a little confusing here. So Ryan Matthews has got a top ten run going. That much we can say for sure. Uh, with no front end on the car, and oh man, does that thing look like a mess. As um, there's Davina Henton on the inside of Tara Vinan. Now, Davina Henton, I don't know where she got this sudden burst of motivation because Davina Henton has been incredibly down on the radio. Um, and she's going now around Rantanen. But I do wonder if Rantanen just let her go because look at the damage on that 11 car. I don't think I'd want to be hanging around that car very long either. Melanie Clavino brings the two car into the pits. That's going to be about another five laps or so before the leaders come in. Scott Bates looks like he's reeling Krikorian in at the moment. That's a little strange. David Krikorian's strength in this race is, has been over really long runs, and if Scott Bates is now cutting into that advantage, then the best thing I can say is that Scott Bates has been doing a better job at adjusting his car as the track conditions change over the course of this race. So this 88 car... We got a battle for the win in our hands. This one ain't over yet, even though DK has led every lap, all 57 laps, as Alessandro Rossini now making his way uh, around, looks like Kivela. Uh, it's hard to tell the Sylvan cars apart. Yep, that's Kivela, 119 car. But Alessandro Rossini has actually been the fastest car on the racetrack these past two stints. He's reeling in the leaders. Scott, uh, so Scott Bates better not be looking out just his windshield. He better be looking in his mirrors. Because because at this rate, he might have an Aperture Science Volpe showing up. Alessandro Rossini never won a Master Cup race. Scott Bates never won a Cariola. David Krikorian never won a Master Cup race either. So you got three very highly motivated men that are gunning for this one. Rossini. He's going to clear the lapped car. Yep, Davina Henson has just pit the 11. As uh, Rossini has just uh, trying to get around uh, Yuho Cavela. And I'd like to point out I'm thankful that Volpe has the same sponsor on both cars, but they also managed to have two different paint jobs for both, or at least two different color schemes. So, um, so there you have Alessandro Rossini in car number three, uh, continuing to impress, as well as Packer Carroll, who's still hanging tough in fifth position. Packer Carroll in car 18 could be could he be on his way to a uh, possibly on the podium well Manicor engineering has built cars here before that have gone really fast you do wonder though whether or not this might be the shot in the arm that Packer Carroll's career needs certainly it looks like it this isn't the Packer Carroll of a couple of years ago who was spinning and crashing and everything Packer Carroll has learned maturity, it seems, and it's working well for him. Ryan Matthews all sorts of out of control around Ingrid Hadeland. Hadeland takes to the sand to miss him. Ingrid Hadeland is, I think, three laps down, didn't want another collision, but I have to say that I don't see a single mark on that 93 car, so you can say what you want about Ingrid Hadeland. She's doing at least one thing right. Don't see any marks on it. There's Ben Atkins in the 50 ahead of David Krikorian. That's another driver who's done everything right. He got it into the, he got that car into the race, and uh, he's still on the lead lap with a Tutino, with just under 10 laps to go. As, as David Krikorian is pitting the 04, Scott Bates, he's hard on the brakes entering the pits. Scott Bates, look how much ground he makes up because DK had to get around Ben Atkins, whose pit stall was very close to the back. Rossini has gained on him as well. We've got a, we've got a battle now, boys. We got just under 10 laps to go and the battle for the win is kicking up Rantanen and Teravainen leave the pits Virtanen leaving the pits behind Krikorian where is the 88 now that's the only car we're watching now watching for the three in the 88 here comes Kingston here comes Atkins Krikorian leaves his pit stall there is Scott Bates 
right on his bumper, and there he is, Alessandro Rossini. It's game on. One, two, and three in the race. You can throw a blanket over them and cover all three of them. Here they, here they come now, merging from the track. Rossini is all over Scott Bates like a bad smell, and they're both reeling in Krikorian, who is trying to warm up his tires a little bit, but it looks like Scott Bates may be a little bit quicker at this stage of the game early on. And now DK sliding wide. Here comes the 88. He's sticking his nose in. This could be a very ambitious move. He pulls it off. Scott Bates on the inside. Rossini trying to set both of them up. Bates swings it wide. Rossini sees opportunity. DK's. Oh, they're going to go. Oh, Scott Bates may have a better run going down into seven. Down into the Kalela hairpin. Scott Bates is taking the lead around the outside. And the Oklahoma native moves into the lead of the race. On, as DK now tries to catch Scott Bates through the Dwyer S they go. And now DK is trying to hold off Rossini, the Italian. But Rossini all over him. Just that we don't have too many laps remaining. So DK, this is the first challenge he has received all race long. And I don't think he quite knows how to react to this. He's trying he's being very, very uh, active with his defensive driving. But Rossini's got a better run through the giant mallet carousel coming out of the main straight away. Scott Bates still leads, but DK has got a challenge from Rossini, and Rossini has taken second. Alessandro Rossini has moved up into second place. DK back to third. As the field now, as the leaders enter one, Scott Bates is pulling away. Rossini is trying to gain on him as they go around the lap car of Lewis Kingston in car number 17. As Rossini trying to chase down Scott Bates, DK is having problems getting around the 17. As Rossini in car number three, the Aperture Science Volpe pulling away from Krikorian and he's hunting down Scott Bates in the 88 car. Bates now entering the Dwyer S in the in the custom carts ride. No traffic around him, but he's got to look in his mirrors. He's got to be aware that there is a very, very hungry Italian coming in a, in a rapid pace. Scott Bates has uh, never won a Cariella, as I've mentioned uh, quite a few times. He's won at just about every other track on the calendar, though. We look back at uh, one of the unsung heroes of the day, Nathan Nurmister of England. Local team, no, uh, nurse speed is, but uh, Nathan Nurmister, this is his first ever Master Cup start. He didn't even run in the first two rounds of qualifying. Couldn't get that car on track. They got it working for round three. He put it in the show, and Nurmister is having a fantastic showing. It's one of the older guys out there. But Scott Bates still leads the way. He's coming around behind Ben Atkins in the 50 car. Atkins is giving him plenty of room. But it, there's only so much Atkins can do. You have to still get around him. And uh, it doesn't matter how courteous Ben Atkins is. Just getting around him will cost you time. But not uh, Ben Atkins in that 50 car. Now there's... Here we got an interesting scenario. Ben Atkins was uh, Rossini's teammate last year. As we're looking at Lewis King's... Oh! Contact! Kingston and Loxon and off and one. And that's a big impact for Christopher Loxon and... And Lewis kicks in in turn one. Loxanen was running in the was running close to the points, and it looked like Lewis Kingston may have turned down into the back of the 335 and just took both of them out. Loxanen had just merged from pit lane. Zelda Ashby in the 55 is running well down the order. And oh, whoa! Ashby, who entered this race as the championship leader, that's gonna go up in smoke. She had a penalty anyway. And with that penalty, she was off the lead lap and not in a points position at all. And this is really going to hurt Ashby long term. Scott Bates, in the meanwhile, still leads in this 88 car. Rossini closing in. We've got just under five laps to go, and they are coming around behind the 79. That orange car of Archer Harris, who started dead last and has made an absolute hero of himself today in that car. Archer Harris in car 79 trying to stay on the lead lap, but at the same time, he's got lead, he's got the leaders behind him and uh, should be a little bit courteous. We don't have too much longer left in this race. Uh, there's no traffic around Archer Harris. Needs to get out of the way. I don't think this is the best place for the leaders to catch him unless he doesn't break and drives right off the course. 
But Archer Harris has got a points finish that he smells. Rossini is trying to set Scott Bates up. The 79 is getting in the way. Scott Bates now peeks his nose out. No, not quite. Car 79 definitely needs to get out. Whoa, he's all over the place. Archer Harris, that car, that Thunder GT is all over the place. Scott Bates gets by him, but look at how much time it cost him. Now Scott Bates getting squeezed down. The 79 really, I think, a bit out of line, but here comes Rossini. Here he comes. Alessandro Rossini is about to move into the lead of the race with just coming now to five laps to go as Rossini moves by Scott Bates and Alessandro Rossini is going to take the lead with just under five laps to go, just five laps to go now. Scott Bates in car 88 has just been displaced by, by Rossini using a lap car to his advantage, but can Rossini clear him? Oh, that hole's getting a lot narrower. David Krikorian in the 04 smells blood here. DK can still get back to the lead here. He's put it, oh, Krikorian a bit wide. Almost into the back of the 79. Scott Bates in car number 88. Had to check up a little bit there too. Rossini in the three. Can, I don't think he can quite believe what is happening right now. But uh, this is what happens when you have a very hungry, talented driver that the field is overlooked that the series seems to have overlooked for several years, except for Cyril Volpe, who has stuck him in this car alongside Leonid Roderick uh, this year, and Rossini has absolutely started to fly. He's been fast all season long. Everyone but Leonid Roderick seems surprised, but uh, Rossini in this three car could be on his way to the, to the biggest win of his career, and it would be his first top-level victory as Scott Bates uh, is trying to make sure that that doesn't quite happen because we still got he still got to complete one more lap now white flag for Alessandro Rossini Scott Bates is not far behind him but he's got to make this last lap he has to complete it and he's got traffic ahead traffic that is in a battle of its own so Alessandro Rossini coming now behind Virtanen in the 117 uh, Antero Virtanen in that in that uh, one of the Sylvan cars that started on the front row, but has had a bit of a miserable day um, once the the green flag dropped. Rossini now, he's he doesn't have he has to be patient though, but he can't be too patient because Scott Bates is coming. He's doesn't have about half a lap to go. One one half of a lap. Scott Bates and David Krikorian could be setting him up. Coming now, down, in, down into Kalela's hairpin. As Virtanen makes a move on Tenshi. I don't think that's quite what Rossini wants. He doesn't want to see that at all. But Virtanen makes it stick. And now coming through the Dwyer, side by side. He may touches the 25. He's off. He's back on. Rossini barely hangs on. After contact with Yamino Tenshi, who I don't think he should have made a move there. But, as, but I don't think he's damaged it either. Alessandro Rossini, he's got one turn to go. Coming through the mallet carousel. Rossini, Scott Bates, David Krikorian, they make the turn for home now. On the main straightaway, Scott Bates isn't close enough. Alessandro Rossini wins it. Rossini wins it, despite a very scary last lap for the Italian. But it's his first ever Master Cup Series victory in the Cariola Grand Prix. Fantastic effort by Volpe Racing Team to get Rossini into victory lane. Something that we had expect that at least they had expected. But uh, what a thriller of a finish. Scott Bates, David Krikorian, both within a second of victory. Melanie Klavano, uh was whacked with a 30 second time penalty. Didn't end up making a bit of difference. She would have been fourth regardless. There is still that uh, post-race incident that's need that will still be investigated, but Packer Carroll, P5, that's what he needed. That's what his career needed. Well done for Packer Carroll. That was a fantastic drive. Archo Kekin and Ian Cooper, great results. Yulina Sova, Mikko Rantanen, Marcus Teravine in round out the top 10. A lot of names that we may not see for the rest of the year, but all they wanted to do was to show up here and have good runs. Teravinen, Virtanen, and Rantanen, that is. And they did very well. Ryan Matthews, this will actually really help his Independence Trophy bid. And he was the first car off the lead lap. Uh, Ryan Matthews in car 06. Still had a great run regardless. 
Nermister, Archer Harris, solid runs there. Archer Harris, this will really help him in the Independence Trophy as well, especially coming from 46th on the grid to 14th. Davina Henton from 44th to 16th. Ben Atkins from 40th to 15th. Kuznetsov from 42nd to 17th. Talk about motivation, and Kuznetsov beat his teammate, which is something that uh, I don't think we've really seen in a straight head-to-head -head battle this year. Alexis Rainsford and Scott Stoidler round out the points finishers. With seven races in the books, let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. Melanie Klavano, as it stands, leads by two points over Alessandro Rossini, but there is still that uh, incident earlier that uh, is being investigated with Melanie Klavano. We'll have to wait and see about that. Ashby is the only other driver that could take the points lead after the round of Russia, as it stands right now. Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kakinen are still very much in the hunt. Scott Bates jumped 13 positions. David Krikorian jumped 18, but this is only DK's second start of the year, and he's been in the top 10 both times. Uh, Kurt Pliskin in car number 16, and Axel Anderson of the Michelin Sun 74 both dropped three places. Greg Woodard, Yamino Tenchi down a few, but Tenchi's not running the whole year either. Uh, Savaral needs to get his season turned around quickly. Uh, if he's going to be a legitimate title threat. Same goes for um, Kevin Dwyer, Gaspar Souza, Davina Henton. Uh, Packer Carroll sneaks up into the top 10 in point, or top 20 in points, rather, uh, gaining 16 places after his fantastic result today. But the biggest gain of all has to go to Ian Cooper, who is not listed here. He's 21st in points, but in one race today, he gained 51 places in the championship. And those the result today are the only points he has so far this year. So, uh, Cariola can really turn someone's season around quite drastically. Uh, we do understand, though, that Jacob Card, who is uh, 22nd in points, who lost quite a few places in the championship, uh, Card had, uh, was not uh, able to be reached. He uh, uh, was actually taken away from the track on a stretcher. So, uh, we do hope everything is well with Jacob Card, the driver of car number six. Um, but with that being said, I um, have to be looking forward to the next race to see if uh, if uh, anything happens to Card because uh, Leonardo International does not have a reserve driver available uh, for the round of Russia, so that could make things rather interesting. Let's have a look at the Independence Trophy. Ryan Matthews still on top, no surprise there, but Archer Harris had a pretty good day with that 79 team, and there's still plenty of races to go before the Independence Trophy is decided. I wouldn't call it too early on Ryan that Ryan Matthews is going to take it, uh, but 151 points and with a couple of mulligans still to go, I think Ryan Matthews is in a pretty good position right now. Normal service will resume as the series will head east after this race and head to Russia for the eighth round of the championship.